we are all privileged to be in this service to listen to John preach his very first message. He announced his call to preach a week or two ago. And um, what an honor to be a part of this service. So John, you come and you preach what God has laid on your heart to bring, my friend. If you would, if everyone will bow your heads, please. We're going to start off in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Dear Heavenly Father, I hope that everyone who's walked across that threshold and walked into this doorway and is sitting in this pew can feel your Holy Spirit. Father, if they cannot, I hope by the end of this message that they do feel you and that you move inside of them and you get them the strength and the conviction to walk down this aisle and say, Lord, I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I take Jesus as my Savior, and I want to be saved. Father, I pray that that happens. I pray that this message is yours, and I pray that everything goes according to your will. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. Life Bridge. Two weeks ago, I was sitting where John is, and I walked across the stage, and I told Pastor Charlie that I have felt the Lord speak to me, and I wish with all my heart to accept and answer his calling to preach. And he had said, well, son, that's all you have to do. You have to be willing to get on that bus. And let me tell you, as you can see, as I'm standing before you, that I am fully in that bus. He's in the driver's seat, but I'm still on that bus. And I have all of your prayers with me. So see, you take LifeBridge's prayers, and you take God's word, and you equate them together, and it should be an awesome message. Amen. So that's what we're going to hope happens. Amen. We want to talk about Mother's Day, and as you can see in the slide in front of you, it says the holiday was created by Anna Jarvis in West Virginia in 1908. See, Mama Jarvis, Anna's mother, had the dream that all mothers would be celebrated for one day. And that celebration was to honor them for everything that they do, everything that they go through, from helping you tie your shoelaces to helping you count one plus one equaling two. Everything that a mother does, Mama Jarvis wanted every mother to be celebrated. The only problem I have with Mama Jarvis's vision, her dream, is that Mother's Day should end on every day that begins and ends with why. Mothers should be celebrated at all times, Monday through Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday. They don't get a day off, so why do you get a day off in celebrating them? We need to talk about what mothers go through for you. Just imagine their life for one moment. Typically, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. The alarm goes off. Maybe she hits snooze, but she's up by 4.15. Half asleep, she walks into the kitchen and she prepares dad's lunch. While preparing dad's lunch, she opens the door to let the dog out. As she finishes dad's lunch, she opens the door and lets the dog back in. She then begins to make the children's lunches for their school, or she counts out her dollar for their school fare. At that point, she begins to start breakfast. Well, Dad now awakens to the smell of breakfast. He comes downstairs, and they share a moment in the kitchen. And she says, honey, watch the bacon. I'm going to wake up the children. Now, she goes to wake up the children. At this point, either the bacon is burnt or she's having the fight with the children because Dad has walked off. So she comes back inside and says, children, sit down. The kids are half asleep. Some of them may be a little cranky because they stayed up too late playing video games. And she now has to try and get the kids to eat breakfast. Well, one of them inevitably is going to say, I don't want bacon. Or Billy got more bacon than I got, so she has to quell that argument. Then she has to prepare for the last minute study session. You know, Susie has a test. Susie is not prepared. So mom was reading index cards at playing the flashcard game as she's finishing up the breakfast. She then gets everybody out to school. Father's in the driveway backing up. The kids are getting ready to board the bus. And she calls down the phone and says, hey, honey, don't forget to pay the water bill. She then goes back inside, and now she gets to have a moment to herself. She gets to sit down and drink her coffee. Well, at this point, two or three hours have passed, the dog is whining. So then she gets up and lets the dog back out. She then takes care of the morning dishes. She then lets the dog back in. She gets a chance to read the morning paper. After she's done with the paper, she has to start her day. She has to clean the bathroom. She has to make the bed. She has to make sure that the floors are taken care of. The dog starts to whine again, so she lets the dog back out. She then finishes the floors, lets the dog back in, threatening the dog. If you mess up the floors, you're over with. 
So she shuts the door back again. She then decides what she has to prepare for, for dinner. So now she has to go to the grocery store. She has to buy all the groceries. She comes inside. Well, now she has to let the dog back out because the dog's been caged up. So she begins to prepare dinner. She lets the dog back in. Now the kids come in. So she starts to help the kids with homework after asking about their day. The dinner is now being cooked. Dad walks in. Honey, did you pay the water bill? No, dear, I'm sorry, I forgot. So now she has to make sure she pays the water bill. The kids are starting to fight over dinner. Same discussion. Billy got a bigger piece of steak than Susie did. It never ends. As soon as she's done with the dishes from dinner, she tells the kids to go play. She talks to Hubby for a minute and chastises him about why did you forget the water bill. I painfully reminded you of this. <laughs> she then calls the children into the living room. They share a family show. Dad preaches a little bit in the Bible. Then she takes the kid off to bubble bath, or at least Dad should be preaching a little bit in the Bible. She takes the kids off to the bubble bath time. She spends an hour getting the kids bathed and off to bed. Now Mom has an hour or two at most by herself before she has to start the process all over again. And we honor them one day a year. Mama Jarvis was right. They do deserve celebration, but it should be on every day that ends in Y. Inevitably, as Pastor Charlie said, Mother's Day is a day that is both joyful and remorseful. Some of our mothers are no longer here. Some of our mothers are either out of state, they're simply working, or they have passed on. I'm going to ask Miss Dovey to come up for just a moment and share a poem real fast regarding mothers who are no longer with us. I wrote this poem back in 1995 while I was at church camp one day. And I was just thinking on these things that Brother John was talking about. But the things that my mother had to do for us children was a lot more than what mothers have to do today. My mother started with a breakfast and then talking about wash day. Wash day, she had to draw the well from a 50-foot well in a two-gallon bucket. And we drawed the well up to fill the wash pot. We built a fire around the wash pot. We put the water in the, for the, in the, put the clothes, uh, hot water in the, in the washing machine. Had a ringer type washing machine. We had to wring it out into another bucket of tub of water we had drawn up and another tub of water. And then we had to <laughs> wring them out and hang them out. And I was just thinking, did I ever really go and tell my mother how much I appreciated what she did just that one day for me? It took all day long because there was anywhere from six to eight washers of clothes that had to be done and hung on the line. The next day was ironing, washing and ironing. And I just wondered, did I really thank my mother for that? And I wrote this poem, Tell Mother. If I could really recall my childhood days, there would be so much that I would tell mother. I would tell her how beautiful she was and how much I loved her, and then I would go further. I would tell her how much it meant to know that she would always be there when I returned each day from school. For my needs, she would always care. Even though my dresses were few, I always knew that one would be starched, ironed, and hanging in the closet and waiting for me. I'd tell her just how much I enjoyed the good food from her table, all those pies and cakes she made, and most of the time, Mother wasn't even able. Oh, how we missed the opportunity to express the feeling of our heart. Somehow we just feel they know, and we don't tell them before they depart. So if you still have your mother, I think you would really be smart to go and tell her now and tell her all the things that you have on your heart. When this candle burns out, that's when you all get to go home. <laughs> this candle is going to stay lit for us to, as a way to say and remember our mothers who are not here with us. As I said, it, it's not always that mom is passed on. Mom could simply be out of state. She could simply be out of town. She simply could be working. Bow your heads for just a moment, please. Father, if mama has passed on, I know that she is in heaven with you. Father, I, I beg you to allow her just a moment to, to look down on us and see all that we've accomplished.
Father, some of us have accomplished so very, very much, and we pray that we make our mama happy, that we make our mama proud. Father, we miss her so very much. We miss her holding our heads and telling us it's going to be okay when we cry. We miss her teaching us things that we may have forgotten or life's lessons that we were not prepared for. Father, we simply miss the ability to go to her house, open her door, and hug her. Father, we miss her so very much. Father, I pray that mom is proud of us, and I pray that we do everything to make you proud of us as well, Father. Father, if we don't, I pray that you convict us and get us on that right path. I ask all these things in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. To so join in on Exodus real fast, the next slide is going to show. Exodus 20, verse 12. It reads, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Let's think about that for a moment. Mama Jarvis wanted a day to celebrate mothers. One day. Well, here God is telling you to honor her. I don't read anywhere on there where it says one day. Honor thy mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. If you honor mom, what I get out of that means that you're going to live longer. Why would you not want to honor her? Now, I know some of us have the best mom in the world. We think she hung the moon. She rightfully earned every single greatest mom coffee mug that you ever bought her. Some of us didn't have that. Some of us don't have a relationship with our moms at all. To some of us, mom is grandma. To some of us, mom is somebody else who has filled that role. But, having said that, either direction of where you are, be it the greatest mom in the world, no relationship with mom, or don't want to talk about mom because you're in a church and evil things will come out of your mouth, you must honor her. Because regardless of what spectrum you are on, she helped make you who you are. That sounds odd. A great mother, you can see helping form and make who you are. But a bad mother making you who you are? Well, how? Think about it. If mom was not there, and she didn't help you play with Barbie dolls, or she didn't tell you how to throw the baseball in the front yard, or she never attended any of those events that were at school, or she never helped you with your studies, or taught you how to cook, or did whatever it is that you felt lacking, you learned that whenever I had a child, whenever it was my time to be that parent, I would do the exact opposite. If mom was not there at the soccer game, I'm going to be at the soccer game. If mom didn't show me how to braid Barbie doll's hair, I'm going to teach her how to braid Barbie's hair. On the flip side of that, if mom was wonderful and she taught you how to cook, then you said, great, I can make fried chicken. Everybody will be happy. We have to honor them. I know it's hard. I know that there are some relationships that are absolutely wonderful, and you can go with them and do anything. And a great example is Barbara. Ten years ago, I joined the Bates clan, and she has taken me on in the role of her baby son for ten wonderful years. She has gotten on to me. She has nurtured me. She has loved me. She has chastised me. She's invited me into her home with open arms. I am so very blessed to have that kind of a relationship and to call her mom for the last 10 years. My only regret is that I did not marry her daughter soon enough so that I could have called her mom for even more years. On the flip side of that again, if you do not have that kind of relationship with your mother, let go and let God. Try and forgive and move past. If mom is alive and you have the ability to try and repair that relationship, I encourage you to try. It will be hard. It will not be something to where you walk into the cafeteria or the cafe and say, Mom, let's sit down and have coffee, and everything will go smoothly from that point. It will take work. But I encourage you to take that first step. Get on the phone and call her. 
Write her a letter if she will not take your call. Send her an email if you don't have her address. Send her a text message. Try and make amends. Life is way too short. You will eventually miss her. We're going to begin Proverbs teaching. Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 8. We're going to pause at every two verses. It says, My son, do not forget my teachings, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Prolong your life many years. So if we listen to mom... Not only because we have now honored her, we're going to live longer, but now listening to her teachings is going to prolong our life even more years and bring us prosperity. Now, prosperity can be tricky. That does not mean that you're going to have thousands upon millions of dollars in your bank account and live in a mansion. Prosperity simply means that you are blessed and that you are happy and that you are provided for. Yeah. Mandy and I at one time made close to $70,000. If we wanted to go to the movies, we went. We wanted to get a hamburger, we went. Whatever we wanted to do, we could go do. But we were not happy. Now, we're like everybody else. We live paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes we have steak and sometimes we have bologna sandwiches. But we are happy. Amen, bro. Prosperity is not about what's in your bank account. It's about how happy you are. Right. That can be achieved spiritually. And it can be achieved by being in the right relationships, surrounding yourself with the right group of people. Prosperity does not mean the size of your bank account. It says, do not forget my teachings, but keep your commands in your heart. Command. That does not necessarily mean the mother says, at 3 o'clock you're going to scrub the bathroom, at 4 o'clock you're going to do the dishes, and at 5.30 you're going to cut the grass. That simply means listen to mom. She's going to teach you so very, very much. Hopefully she will teach you so very, very much. She's going to teach you about how to tie your shoe about how to make that fried chicken, about how to make the right decisions, about how to find and identify the right kind of people that you are supposed to be with. She's going to teach you how to love if you let her. She's going to teach you how to write. She's going to reinforce what your teachers are teaching you. She's going to reinforce what dad is supposed to be teaching you. She's going to reinforce what the Sunday school teacher teaches you. She's going to reinforce what the pastor teaches you in God's word, but you have to to let her. That's hard. As Pastor Charlie said at 5, it's I love you mom. At 10, it's whatever mom. Don't whatever mom. Some of you would give anything right now to have mom sitting next to you. And I'm so very sorry she isn't. I'm so very, very sorry. But as I said a moment ago, let go and let God pray. Hopefully mom will eventually get here beside you. If mom is beside you, hug her now and tell her thank you. Jamie, hug your mother. Hug your moms. Tell them thank you. They do so very, very much for you. So very much for you. If we can go to the next slide, please. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. If mom teaches you how to love that neighbor and how to love that child, Billy, in the playground, then you need to carry that on. You need to teach others. You need to hold on to that love so that you can show others. You know, a bully, and I was a bully, is only that because they haven't experienced love. Now, I'm not telling you when they try and say, give me your lunch money, that you embrace them in a hug, but... <laughs> Try to show them kindness at every turn that you possibly can. Of course, when they're not stealing your lunch money. <laughs> Faithfulness. That's in all things. Stay faithful in the word of God. Read it religiously. Stay faithful with the person who is sitting next to you that you have said I do to. Stay faithful in paying your bills on time. Stay faithful in, in keeping to your schedule. Stay faithful in all things that you need to do. If you have a commitment that says, I will work from 8 to 5, and you need that job from 8 to 5 to support your family, you stay faithful to your schedule so that you can support your family. If you are married and something else catches your eye,
that may look a little bit better than what you are, the grass is not greener on the other side. You said, I do. Stay faithful. Bind them around your neck and write them on a tablet of your heart. Don't forget them. If it's in your heart, it will never leave you. Because the moment your heart stops, that's when you're going to meet the Father. You don't have to worry about anything else. If it stays in your heart, it will not leave you. But you have to put it there first. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Win good name in the sight of God and man. If you do what mama tells you to do, and you've learned how to love, and you learn how to treat people to respect, and you talk to people like you have good common sense, and you're polite and courteous, you will establish a good name. People will look at you differently. They will say, I really like Brandon. Brandon is a very nice individual. Brandon is courteous. Brandon always talks to me. Brandon is a friend. But on the flip side, that bully, had I not changed, you would have absolutely hated me. You would have said, well, I can't stand John. Not only is he loud, but you can laugh, I'm loud, but he's mean, he's aggressive, he's a bully, and he steals my lunch money. You don't want to hang out with people like that. And on the flip side of that, you want to try and strive to be who you can be. Right, Tyrone? That's right. That's right. You want to make sure that you are a good person, not only in your eyes, but in God's. You can be a spiritual leader if you do that. There are a great many spiritual leaders right here, right now. Merlene in the very, very back pew is a spiritual leader. If you have not had the honor to pray with her, God speaks to this woman. Brandon and Julia are spiritual leaders. They're not gray-headed and old. They haven't been in God's Word for centuries upon centuries. Not saying anything about my older congregation members at all, but I'm just showing you that your age and your appearance and how you are does not matter if you do these things. And speaking of their spiritual leadership, Wednesday, I don't know if it was something Julia said or something Brandon said, but they stirred a youth. That youth felt God in something that they said. And a parking lot came to Brandon and said, I want to be saved. Show me how. Praise God. We need more spiritual leaders so that they can do what? What was it the thing that Brandon said repeatedly over and over and over again? So they become awesome spiritual beings. If we can go to the next slide, please. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. What does that mean, John? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You have to believe with everything that you are that this is true. That this is not only true, but it's the only truth. It says Holy Bible for those who can't read and need your glasses. And He is going to keep you straight. But you cannot try to understand Him. Back in November, Pastor Charlie shared with all of us that he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and then he prayed some more for God to show him a direction, to show him what to do with LifeBridge. But God didn't come to Pastor Charlie and say, I want you to stay the course. He didn't answer him. But Pastor Charlie continued to pray. And then Brother Terry in the very back called him one day and said, I would like to talk to you about possible merge. And Pastor Charlie rejoiced because he did not try to understand. He simply allowed God. He prayed. He believed in this. Keep your path straight. If you believe everything that Mama has taught you and Daddy is supposed to be teaching you and you read your Bible and you do exactly what you're supposed to do, you will stay straight. Now, you're going to have mistakes and you're going to have faults and there will be a detour from time and again because we are still sinners. And some of you have sinned today and some of you will sin later. 
and some of you will sin tomorrow. That's our nature. But God is always going to love you. And if we do the best we can to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts, he will keep us straight. Can we change the slide, please? Now, as I said, that's my colorful ostrich. There are good moms who's going to teach you all those things, and there are bad moms. In Job 39, verses 13 through 16, it says, The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully, but they cannot compare with the pinions and feathers of the stork. She lays her eggs on the ground and lets them warm in the sand, unmindful that a foot may crush them, that some wild animal may trample them. She treats her young harshly, as if they were not hers. She cares not that her labor was in vain. Some mothers are all about them, or they do the opposite and try to live through their children. They try to have unfulfilled fantasies of, what if I was that beauty queen? What if, what if, what if? And they rob their children of their childhoods and try to instill what they missed upon them. And they flap their feathers. Other mothers simply do not exist. They simply do not want the responsibilities of being a parent, so they simply leave the egg, leave the child to further develop on their own, and pray that nothing tramples it, but they do nothing to protect the child. Think for a moment about your children. In no way am I stressing or saying that you were that ostrich, but just think. While you're making the beds and getting ready to cook dinner, do you go to your child and say, Shane, how was football practice? What did you do in school today? What was first period, son? What did you do in second period? What was lunch? Who are you going to go party with on Saturday night, remembering to be home at 10? Do you go to your daughter and say, Megan, I don't think that dress is appropriate. You need to wear something else. Do you go to your children and try and involve yourself in their lives? Or do you leave them as that egg and have nothing to do with them and pray that they don't get trampled? They're going to. I proved it just a few minutes ago. I got on almost every single person's Facebook that's in this congregation and pulled up picture upon picture upon picture of your lives you can almost say I invaded your privacy think about what the person is going to do that you have not prepared them for that sexual predator that drug dealer that person is going to come to your son or your daughter and say I want you to help me beat up Joe I want you to help bash Joe's windshield I want you to be on the corner of fifth and main and help me sell crack because I don't have any money if you do not involve yourself in your children's lives, you are preparing them to fail. You are leaving that egg, so to speak, in the dirt. Next slide, please. John 16, verse 21 says, A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. I don't know if you can consider it blessed, but I was in the room when my son was born. I saw my wife in such horrendous pain, her legs almost all the way back to her head, and her constantly being told to push while I'm rubbing her hair saying, baby, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I didn't know what to do. I knew not to get anywhere near where her hands were so that I couldn't be hit. And I didn't want to hold her hand because I didn't want to become a vice grip and my hand be broke. So I just stroked her hair and said, baby, it'll be okay. But she was in so much pain. But yet as soon as my son, who thankfully turned out different because he looked like an alien, but when he was born and he was put in that weight and we heard his cry, that pain was gone. It was over with. It was worth it. Immediately, this, this thing that was kicking me in the middle of the night and it was causing me to go get 
bomb stick or fudge sticks at brownies. This thing that was making my wife have mood swings was here. <laughs> and that cry, that baby's first cry, it made all of it worth it. Julia knows it was worth it. We have to make sure that we don't lose that cry, that feeling that we had when our baby was brought to us for the first time and we were drugged, but we looked and we saw that it had ten fingers and ten toes and we were so blessed. We can't lose that, Miss Dovey. We have to make sure that we hold on to our children and we involve ourselves in their lives and we make sure that they stare at a wall, that the wall is well painted. We do everything we can to involve ourselves so that we don't lose that. Next slide, please. Now, fathers and children, you have a role to play as well. Mother is still just one person. And as much as we love her and like to think otherwise, she is not able to be in three places at once. She can't clone herself. And even if technology continues and she was able to clone herself, I don't think she would want to. Who would? Why would I want to clone myself just so that I can help Billy with his math homework while clone B does the dishes, while clone C does the toilet? When do I have time for me? You'd have to have 50 clones in some parents' lives. Mothers nowadays do so very much and as the family dynamic changes, as Brother Charlie admitted to a minute ago, if mom is now single, mom now has to work. So in the midst of letting the dog out repeatedly, in the midst of buying the groceries, in the midst of getting the house ready, of course now she's not cooking for dad, she's cooking for herself, but that only saves her a little bit, mom still has to work. So now it's gotten harder. It's even harder if when mom and dad decide to split up, if dad is nowhere to be found. So now mom has to work, get the house ready by herself, and she has to wear that other hat of being a dad. So now mom is outside with her nails done throwing a baseball. Children, you can help as well. You can help by what? Listening to mom's commands by taking what she has taught you and applying it to your lives so that she doesn't have to worry about what is happening to you. She doesn't have to worry about 3 o'clock in the morning, is my baby doing what I have taught them? Because you are obeying what your mother has taught you. Now we are going to make mistakes. As I've already said, you are breathing, you are alive, you will sin. And there is no such thing as a little sin. But I would much rather you do something minor than something major. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's okay to cuss or to stay up late. But I would much rather that happen than you be robbing a bank. Both sins, but in varying degrees. But if you do what you're supposed to do and remember what mother has taught you, you won't be sinning anyways. At 10 o'clock when Shane's partying, he knows, hey, his little phone goes off at 9.50, I've got to go home. Bye. And at 10 o'clock he walks in the door, tells mom and dad thank you, and goes to his room and does whatever it is that Shane does. Right, Shane? Right. <laughs> we have to remember to do our part. Dad, your part is also important. When you come home from work, that does not mean it's time for you to kick your boots off and sit in your recliner and drink yourself a nice cold glass of iced tea. You have responsibilities. Mom has been chasing these kids around all day. She wants a break. You take the kids to the park. You take the kids to the backyard. You give mom one hour so that she doesn't go nuts. Because if mama's not happy, the whole house is not happy. Amen. So you do your part. And we have to make sure that we do that. The family dynamic is so different now. 
used to be everybody worked eight to five and was home. Six o'clock, we sat around the table and had dinner. Seven o'clock, 7.30, we did our Bible study. Eight o'clock, everybody was asleep. Sometimes mom and dad aren't even home at eight o'clock. Sometimes some of our teenagers who are working and have a job on top of school aren't home by eight o'clock. When I was a teenager, I didn't get off work until 12.30. I closed. And then had to turn around and get up at 6.30. I was a zombie. I slept in first period. And people wonder why kids fail in first period. Well, let's stop and look at things from their perspective. But we don't do that. Because we'd much rather they pay their own insurance, or they pay their own car note, or they do whatever it is that they're going to do with their money. Well, you make that choice. You bought them that car. You said, I will help pay with your insurance. If you don't want that responsibility, you simply tell them, Shane, you can't have that truck because your grades are not sufficient and I cannot pay your insurance. And that will motivate Shane to get his grades up. I'm just picking on Shane. I miss Shane. I haven't seen him in a while, so I'm glad he's here. Amen, but we have to make sure that we all do our parts. If even one part of the circle does not complete it, you have a broken circle. Moms can't do it alone. Now, moms, I said earlier that you have to reinforce what's taught at Sunday school. You have to reinforce what dad teaches out of the Bible. You have to reinforce what the pastor speaks when he is up front and you're ever so intently paying attention. Not writing on paper, right, Tyrone? That's right. So you want to make sure that you are reinforcing God's word. If you do that and you are striving to reinforce God's word, no one of your children, no one that your children know, no one that you know will go to hell. But if you don't reinforce, if you don't help teach, if you don't lead by example, that's exactly where your children are going to go unless one of our spiritual leaders or divine intervention saves them. But if you do your job, a spiritual leader or divine intervention will not be necessary because you did it. Will the fabulous Brown sisters please stand up? All the fabulous Brown sisters, please stand up. All of you, you know who you are. <laughs> this is a direct reflection of the testimony of Miss Dovey and her blessed husband, who is no longer with us. Now, if you are a child of the fabulous Brown sisters, will you please stand up? So now we have even more of a testimony of what happens when you are raised in church, when you reinforce God's word, and everybody in that circle does their part. If you are a child of the mother that is standing up, please stand up. We have more. There's Jacob. Come on, kids in the back. There we go. We have more. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are, I believe, ten people, my math may be a little odd, that are now standing up because they did their part. You may sit down, fabulous brown sisters. Thank you. <laughs> they did their part. They reinforced what was true. Can we go to the next slide, please? John 3, 16. For God, and I want you to read this with me now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life if you get only two things from me in this 40 minutes that we have now honor your mothers every day that ends in Y again mama Jarvis was on to something she just didn't think of the big picture but the second thing is you must know where you are going to go and if you do not know that you know you are saved and that you are going to go into heaven, then in a moment whenever I ask Pastor Charlie to come back up here, I pray that you are convicted 
that the Holy Father has moved in you and you come down here and you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because if you don't, you're lost. And in being lost, you're going to go to hell. And I've heard people tell me, well, John, there is no such thing as hell. This is hell. I'm living in hell. No. No, you're not. Your body may hurt right now. You may not be able to pay that light bill that just came in. Your rent may be late. You may not have food upon your table. But in this congregation, there is somebody who will invite you to their home to give you something to eat. There is somebody who will tell you, I will put my arms around you and I will pray for you. I will love on you. There is somebody who is willing to give up their time to help you. This is not hell. But you're going to go there if you're lost. Again, I want you to honor your mothers. Listen to them. Love on them. Regardless of their relationship. If mama is in your life right now and you have plans to go to Luby's afterwards, you tell her you love her. And don't just say, Mom, I love you. Go further and tell her why. Recently, and not to get off track, I had told somebody they were a blessing to me. And that person threw me for a loop because they said, well, why are you a blessing to me? Why do I bless you? And it occurred to me that we become so busy in today's life that we do not share what we mean to somebody. Somebody says, I love you. You just respond in kind. Yeah, I love you too. Somebody says, you're a blessing to me. Oh, well, you're a blessing to me as well. We don't say why. We don't take the time to explain why they're a blessing. Shame on us. I love Pastor Brandon because Pastor Brandon, for the last six months, has always been in my corner. He has always said, John, if you need anything, you come to me. Even before I had shared with him how I felt. Now, he wasn't always available at the moment, and we had a lunch, and we discussed that, and we're on the same page now, but he has always been there for me, and I love you dearly for that. Thank you. Pastor Charlie has been a blessing to me. Pastor Charlie, from the moment we said, go, has said, if you need anything, you call me, and it was a lip service. I've called this man at 5 o'clock in the morning. I don't even know why I was up at 5 o'clock in the morning. But he answered his phone. We exchange emails daily. We go places I never would have envisioned going. I went to a church out in Texas City I'd never even heard of before. Spoke with people I never would have even been introduced to before had it not been for this man. We have to remember to say, I love you because of X, Y, and Z. You are a blessing to me because of A, B, and C. Jamie, I love Jamie for all the right reasons and none of the wrong. Jamie is a great person. Jamie is somebody who at 2 o'clock in the morning will text me and respond to my text and say, John, thank you for thinking of me. It means the world to me. See, she gets it. She takes the time to say you are a blessing because of A, B, and C. By the way, the person who asked why I was a blessing was Linda in the back. We were setting a Celebrate Recovery, which has not been mentioned today, so I want to remind everybody that it's on Tuesdays. But she was sitting in the back, and I was talking to her, and I said, you are such a blessing to me. And she said, well, John, why? Why am I a blessing? And I said, Linda, because you are so powerful. When you speak, it moves me. Her story is amazing. She has such courage, such conviction, and she speaks from the heart. And when she prays, you can feel the power of God flowing through her. Linda, I love you so very much. And you are such a blessing to me because of all the above mentions. Thank you for allowing me the honor to be part of your life. Pastor Charlie, 